नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम नम्रता सिंह एंड यू आर वाचिंग क्वेश्चन आवर प्लस दिस शो फोकसेस ऑन इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चंस रेज्ड बाय मेंबर्स इन बोथ हाउसेस ऑफ पार्लियामेंट कंसर्निंग मैटर्स ऑफ नेशनल इंटरेस्ट इन द राज्यसभा मेंबर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस पार्टीज पोस्ट क्वेश्चंस रिलेटेड टू 10 मिनिस्ट्रीज एंड शॉर्ट रिस्पोंसेस फ्रॉम द रिस्पेक्टिव मिनिस्टर्स Similarly in the Lok Sabha's question hour today members from diverse parties raised questions pertaining to eight ministries and sought responses from the respective ministers In today's program we will be addressing questions regarding the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Ministry of Defence Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Ministry of Communications and Ministry of Commerce and Industry and we'll also provide related information Now let's take a look at some of the questions asked by the members in both the houses today. Lok Sabha MP V K Shri Kandan asked the Minister of Defence whether government proposes to increase the strength of women in defence forces. If so, details of segments where strength of women may to be proposed to increased. The ministry in its reply highlighted various steps taken by the government and the three services. to encourage women to join the armed forces including permanent commission is being granted to women officers in 12 arms and services in addition to army dental corps and military nursing service where they are commissioned women officers are being appointed on board warships in afloat billets and also as special naval air operation officers in the indian navy the experimental scheme to induct women officers in all combat roles initiated by the IAF in 2015 was regularized in the year 2022 into a permanent scheme armed forces have opened entry for women candidates in national defense academy the first second third and fourth batches of women cadets commenced training in the NDA in July 2022 January 2023 July 2023 and January 2024 respectively The organization is implementing inclusive measures to facilitate all required administrative training and policy changes. The ministry further informed that the women officers are being considered for colonel second grade ranks and are being given command appointments. During the transitional phase, custom waivers have been granted to support the smooth career progression of individuals who encountered difficulties in fulfilling mandatory career course requirements. entry of women as agni veers has also commenced in all the three services showcased the prowess of women in various capacities including the daring feats of CRPF BSF and SSB women personnel during the motorcycle display over 260 women demonstrated bravery through formations like chandrayaan and yog se siddhi reflecting their valor and determination the indian navy contingent consisting of 144 men and women agnivirs led by lieutenant prajwal m presented a powerful tableau on nari shakti and sea power across the oceans through indigenization the tableau depicted women in all roles and ranks across the navy showcasing the first indigenous carrier battle group the indian air force tableau led by squadron leader rashmi thakur highlighted the theme bharti vayu sena saksham sashakt atmanirbhar the tableau showcased women air crew flying a C295 transport aircraft emphasizing the IAF's incorporation of space technology and humanitarian aid efforts the indian coast guard contingent led by assistant commandant chunoti sharma showcased the icg's capabilities in countering sea threats and coordinating maritime search and rescue emphasizing its significant role in saving lives at sea in essence Republic 2024 was a powerful tribute to the spirit of Nari Shakti 
showcasing the multifaceted roles and contributions of women across different branches of the armed forces and security agencies. Rajya Sabha MP Vikramjit Singh Sahani as the Minister of Commerce and Industry whether the government has done any qualitative and quantitative assessment of various G20 meetings held in India as to manner in which these meetings will help in India's trade promotion. The ministry in its reply informed the Rajya Sabha that the Group of 20 is the premier intergovernmental forum for international economic cooperation. It holds a strategic importance in securing economic growth and prosperity. It represents around 85% of global GDP, 75% of global trade and two-thirds of the world's population. Throughout the Indian G20 Presidency, four meetings of the Trade and Investment Working Group along with the Trade and Investment Ministerial Meeting were conducted. These sessions facilitated discussions among G20 members and in YT countries regarding India's priorities on key trade and investment issues. The Ministry informed that the nation leveraged our G20 presidency to actively engage with our largest trading partners, most of which are G20 members as well, to foster cooperation and build consensus on trade and investment related issues. Such deepened collaborations fostered mutually beneficial trade agreements and have increased opportunities for Indian exporters in the near and medium term. The agreed outcomes emerging from the deliberations are likely to positively impact India's bilateral trade with its partners. The G20 Trade and Investment Ministers Meeting and the fourth Working Group Meeting was held under India's G20 Presidency. This ministerial meeting resulted in significant consensus on key deliverables outlined in the Trade Ministerial Meeting's outcome document, which includes G20 ministers established 10 comprehensive principles for the digitalization of trade documents, paving the way for a shift towards paperless trade. A Jaipur call for action was issued to enhance information access for micro, small and medium enterprises. The International Trade Center, in collaboration with UNCTAD and WTO, was tasked to improve the Global Trade Help Desk, addressing information gaps. G20 ministers endorsed a generic mapping framework for global value chains, providing a structured approach for GVC data analysis and representation. The framework includes guiding principles for collaboration to ensure the resilience and robustness of critical GVCs. G20 ministers supported the sharing of best practices on MRAs for professional services and the development of a compendium of best practices. Acknowledging the importance of reducing regulatory divergences and trade costs, G20 ministers welcomed the idea of a G20 standards dialogue in 2023. The G20 SIRU team played a pivotal role in advancing the integration of MSMEs into global trade through the Trade and Investment Working Group. Their proactive efforts contributed to the formulation of the Jaipur Action Plan, subsequently incorporated into the official G20 New Delhi Leaders Declaration. Moreover, the Business 20 India Summit 2023 in New Delhi marked significant achievements, including B20 Institute. B20 India proposed establishing a global institute to address emerging global challenges, offering tailored solutions and fostering collaboration with think tanks and G20 legacy institutions, accelerating financial support for decarbonization. In response to Global South concerns, efforts were made to align decarbonization paths in key sectors between the North and South. Global SDA Achievement Fund a proposition was put forth for a global multi-donor fund, GSAF, with contributions from G20 and the next 10 largest GDP countries, based on a formula involving their GDP and per capita GDP. The B20 Task Force on Technology, Innovation and R&D compiled a comprehensive compendium featuring over 125 innovative projects from India and other B20 nations. Rajya Sabha MP Irranna Karadi as the Minister of Communications. 
The number of post offices across the country, along with total number of savings accounts in these post offices and facilities provided to account holders. Whether post offices have been established in all major villages to ensure the smooth implementation of communication systems. The ministry in its reply informed that there are more than 7.52 crore savings accounts in post offices throughout the country. Moreover, the ministry shared that there are currently over 1.49 lakh rural post offices nationwide. These post offices provide access to postal facilities and other services to ensure smooth implementation of communication systems. The savings account holders have the facility of availing the automated teller machine, issuance of checkbook, internet banking, mobile banking, various types of SMS alerts, e-passbook for viewing the balance and account statement, funds transfer from bank accounts to post office accounts and vice versa through national electronic fund transfer and real-time gross settlement, electronic clearing services facility for crediting the interest and maturity amount in bank accounts, interactive voice response system, facility under core banking system. The ministry further informed that all departmental post offices in the country have been computerized and networked under the Information Technology Modernization Project. Branch post offices functioning in rural areas of the country have been provided with mobile devices for carrying out online postal, financial and insurance transactions. In January 2024, India Post Payments Bank achieved a significant milestone extending innovation and inclusive financial services to over 8 crore customers. Since its inception, IPPB has consistently dedicated itself to providing accessible and affordable banking solutions nationwide. focusing on narrowing the financial gap and promoting financial inclusion through a strategic blend of traditional and digital banking services. The success of IPPB is credited to its customer-centric approach and a widespread network of post offices playing a significant role in reaching this milestone. The bank remains committed to advancing financial inclusion, introducing innovative products and overall customer experience in the years ahead. India Post Payments Bank, established under the Department of Posts, Ministry of Communication, operates with 100% equity owned by the Government of India. Launched on September 1, 2018, IAPPB aims to build the most accessible, affordable and trusted bank for the common man in India. With the fundamental mandate to remove barriers for the unbanked and underbanked, IAPPB leverages the vast postal network comprising 1,55,000 post offices, 1,35,000 in rural areas and 3 lakh postal employees. IPPB's operating model aligns with the key pillars of India's stack, enabling paperless, cashless and presenceless banking. Leveraging frugal innovation, the bank delivers simple and affordable banking solutions through intuitive interfaces available in 13 languages. IPPB is committed to promoting a less cash economy and contributing to the vision of digital India. In addition to its banking services, the Department of Posts has taken initiatives to tap into the growing e-commerce business, rationalizing parcel offerings and positioning Speedpost as a premium product for e-commerce delivery solutions. Tie-ups with over 1,000 e-commerce players, automated SMS services, and initiatives like delivering holy water from the Ganga showcase the department's commitment to innovation and meeting the evolving needs of the Indian population. Post offices are also contributing to the community by selling subsidized pulses to consumers. IPPB's milestone achievement and commitment to financial inclusion exemplify positive strides in India's economic growth, showcasing resilience, innovation and a promising future.
Rajya Sabha MP Aditya Prasad asked the Minister of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare whether it is a fact that there is a lot of potential for increasing area of rabi crops cultivation by water management through micro irrigation technique. If so, the details of the steps taken by government. The ministry in its reply in the Rajya Sabha affirmed the potential for increasing the area of rabi crops cultivation by water management through micro irrigation technique. Micro irrigation demonstrates average water saving of 32 to 40 percent compared to surface irrigation. This saved water can be allocated to expand the area under rabi crops using the micro irrigation technique. The implementation of the per drop more crop scheme under the centrally sponsored scheme as part of the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sachai Yojana from 2015 16 to 2021 22 has contributed to this initiative. Starting from 2022 23, the scheme is now integrated into the Rashtri Krishi Vikas Yojana. The House was informed that the nation's homegrown research institutions have developed optimal drip irrigation schedules for various crops across diverse agroecological regions in the country. Additionally, they have designed drip fertigation schedules for 24 crops, enhancing water efficiency and expanding the adoption of micro-irrigation. Furthermore, these institutions provide training and organize field demonstrations to educate farmers, administrators and other stakeholders on these crucial aspects. The Per Drop More Crop Scheme places a strong emphasis on improving water use efficiency at the farm level, primarily through the promotion of micro-irrigation, specifically drip and sprinkler irrigation systems. India has achieved significant progress in micro-irrigation, notably through the Rashtri Krishi Vikas Yojana and the Per Drop More Crop Scheme. Under the PDMC initiative, the government offers substantial financial assistance providing 55% support for small and marginal farmers and 45% for other farmers adopting micro-irrigation. Some states go the extra mile by offering additional incentives or top-up subsidies to further incentivize farmers. To ensure fairness, higher unit costs are considered for states in the Northeast, Himalayan regions and those with low micro-irrigation penetration. Established with an initial corpus, of 5,000 crore rupees, the micro-irrigation fund extends loans to states facilitating the expansion of micro-irrigation coverage. Additionally, a 3% interest subvention on these loans is provided through the PDMC scheme. Over 83.6 lakh hectares of land have been covered under micro-irrigation in India from 2015-16 to 2023-24. The PDMC scheme has successfully covered more than 55 lakh hectares with 30 lakh hectares under micro-irrigation. This initiative not only conserves water but also reduces fertilizer usage, labor expenses and overall input costs, thereby boosting farmers' income. Recent evaluations strongly affirm the scheme's significance in fulfilling national priorities, especially in enhancing on-farm water use efficiency and improving crop productivity. The promotion of modern and smart farming technologies such as Kisan drones is actively underway through initiatives like the Submission on Agricultural Mechanizations. Furthermore, the RKVY Raftar scheme initiated in 2018-19 prioritizes innovation and agri-entrepreneurship development providing support to startups leveraging technology to address agricultural challenges. Lok Sabha MPs Dr. Manoj Rajoria and Ranjita Kohli asked the Minister of Health and Family Welfare the manner in which Kilkari scheme addresses challenges of maternal and child health along with its aspirations and goals in improving health and well-being of mothers and children in India. They also asked the manner in which successful calls have resulted in an impact on overall outreach and effectiveness of the Kilkari scheme. In its reply, the ministry informed that over 7 crore calls were made under Kilkari scheme during the year 2023-24. Presenting the data in the Lok Sabha, the ministry informed 
that 7.71 crore calls to provide audio messages were made in 2022-23, while 4.75 crore calls were made in 2021-22. The ministry said the calls have been helpful to mothers and families in the respective states due to its uniqueness in nature. The information provided through audio messages are helpful in terms of anti- and postnatal care as well as nutrition. The messages were specially tailored according to the gestational period of each beneficiary. Ensuring the well-being and health of pregnant women and newborn children is a significant challenge in the developing world. To address this, access to critical health information is necessary. On January 15, 2016, the government introduced the Kilkari program as part of its Digital India initiative. This mobile-based service is designed for new and expectant mothers. Its goal is to promote healthier choices for the care of newborns by delivering audio messages about pregnancy, childbirth and childcare directly to the beneficiaries. This approach helps overcome literacy challenges in rural areas. Kilkari delivers free, weekly, time-appropriate audio messages about pregnancy, childbirth and childcare via interactive voice response to women registered in the RCH portal. Messaging begins in the second trimester of pregnancy and continues until the child is one year old. The pregnant mother data is fetched from RCH portal to Kilkari through web service which has been implemented between both the applications. The program informs mothers and families about behaviours and practices to be adopted during pregnancy and infancy. The weekly messages help families to educate, remind and also reinforce the prioritised actions for each week during this crucial period. This action not only saves the lives of pregnant women and children from several risks but also ensures a healthy outcome. The Kilkari project serves 18 states and union territories, namely Assam, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Chandigarh, Delhi, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, West Bengal, Jammu and Kashmir, Tripura, Andhra Pradesh, and Andaman Nicobar Islands. Kilkari complemented the work of Ashwas in mobilizing beneficiaries to access health services and reduce the burden on them. Continued Kilkari support to families has led to changes in behaviours and has also improved service utilisation. It has also proved useful during the pandemic when it was difficult to hold physical visits and awareness campaigns to encourage healthcare seeking behaviour. That is all I have for you in this edition of Question Hour Plus. Stay tuned for more and thank you for watching Sunset TV.